I need to get this off my chest because I feel like I'm going insane. I married my husband just two weeks ago and I'm questioning my marriage already. Some backstory. My husband, let's call him Mark, has two kids from his previous marriage. His ex-wife, let's call her Karen, has been a headache since day one. She goes out of her way to make things difficult for us, especially when it comes to the kids. She always drags everywhere as well, always attends all family gatherings and trips. Now, here's where things really started to spiral. Our wedding happened to fall on one of Karen's days with the kids. Despite my objections, Mark insisted on inviting her to the wedding. I agreed because I didn't want arguments and drama before our wedding. Wanted to enjoy the moment of preparation and at least once not to bother about his ex. Well, Karen of course accepted the invitation. She showed up with the kids an hour late and instead of just dropping them off like I'd hoped, she stayed. She was dressed very fancy, which just felt like a slap in my face. I politely asked her to leave, but she flat out refused, saying that she was like family and had every right to be there. Mark and his mother sided with her, saying that she was indeed like family and that she wasn't going anywhere. I was absolutely disgusted by their response, because it was crystal clear to me what Karen was trying to do. I felt humiliated and betrayed. It was supposed to be one of the happiest days of my life, and Karen had managed to ruin it. I couldn't help but question whether Mark truly had my back or if he was still harboring feelings for his ex-wife. So was I an a-hole asking her to leave? I think it was very disrespectful from her to show up late and steal the attention with her fancy black gown. I really hope that despite receiving the invitation, she would drop the kids off and would be sensible enough to leave. Well, if Opie didn't want her husband's ex at the wedding, she should have put her foot down and not tried to kick her out from the wedding as she was already invited to and attending. Opie just looked stupid in my opinion, trying to kick her out because she wore a fancy dress and looked nice. If she wants less of her husband's ex in her life, she needs to be clear with her husband and stand her ground, because now she just looks spineless. Opie should have more dignity and self-worth in my opinion. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Uber44 says, I'm sorry, but your husband is a spineless coward for allowing his ex-wife to dictate the terms of your marriage. You deserve someone who will stand by your side and defend you, not someone who will throw you under the bus at the first sign of trouble. It's clear that he never valued you or your relationship and values his ex more than you. You throw away 23 says, Not the a-hole. Your husband should have respected your wishes, especially on your wedding day. It's clear that his ex-wife is trying to cause trouble, and he's only enabling her behavior. You deserve better than this. You just say an 88 says, I can't believe your husband and mother-in-law sided with his ex-wife over you. That's a major red flag right there. You deserve to be with someone who respects and values you, not someone who allows others to walk all over you. Update. First off, I want to thank everyone who took the time to read my post and offer their advice. Your support means the world to me, especially during this difficult time. Unfortunately, things have taken a turn for the worse since I last posted. After weeks of heated arguments and tension between Mark, Karen, and myself, Mark dropped a bombshell on me. He told me that he couldn't continue our marriage and that he wanted a divorce. I was blindsided. I couldn't believe that after just two weeks of marriage, he was already giving up on us. I begged him to reconsider, but he was adamant that his decision was final. Then, he dropped another bombshell, admitting that he still had feelings for Karen and that he couldn't ignore them any longer. Then I realized that my suspicions and sixth sense didn't lie. To make matters worse, I later found out that Mark had been secretly meeting up with Karen behind my back. He had been confiding in her about our marital issues and seeking comfort from her. It became painfully obvious that he never truly let go of his feelings for her. I felt like a fool forever believing that our marriage stood a chance. I was nothing more than a pawn in Mark's twisted game of emotional manipulation. He had used me to try to move on from Karen, but in the end, he realized that his feelings for her were too strong to ignore. As if the divorce wasn't painful enough, I also had to deal with the heartbreak of losing the stepchildren that I had grown to love as my own. Karen wasted no time in cutting off all contact between me and the kids. It felt like a cruel punishment for simply trying to love and support them. I've spent the past few weeks trying to pick myself up. In hindsight, I realized that I dodged a bullet by getting out of a toxic marriage with someone who never truly valued or respected me and loved me. 
It hurts like hell right now, but I know that I deserve much better than someone who would throw away our marriage for the sake of an old flame. To anyone else going through a similar situation, please know that you are not alone. Best of luck, OP. To begin with, I love my son with all my heart, but he blew up his marriage by cheating and has moved back home. I, 55 female, have three children. My oldest is my daughter, 30, then my twins, 25 male and female. My oldest just got married to a wonderful man. My younger daughter is going to grad school overseas, and that leaves my son. Let's call him Carlos. He has always been a handful. He got married when he was 20. His ex-wife had a three-year-old daughter, whom I love, and no matter what, I am her grandmother. They had a child together, my other grandchild. He is two. Virus caused a lot of stress in his life, and he works in a fly-in, fly-out camp job. He is gone for two weeks at a time, then home for two weeks. He makes very good money and enjoys spending it. Maybe a little bit too much. Carlos cheated on his wife with a co-worker. I'm not judging him. I'm not perfect. But he chose to leave his wife and children and move back home. It doesn't really make sense for him to rent an apartment or something for the 12 days a month he's home, so I allowed it. But he decided to be a jerk, in my opinion, and bring his dog with him. My grandbabies love this dog, but he's trying to punish his ex for telling him to leave. It is a beautiful border collie, and it is the perfect dog for their home. Huge yard, lots of walking trails nearby, even an off-leash park only a 10-minute drive away. I live in an apartment downtown. I am allowed a dog, but if I were to have one, it would be something sedate and non-shedding like a Maltese. I swear I tried watching this dog, but my son is irresponsible. He doesn't walk him much. He doesn't brush the dog. He is just holding on to the dog to leverage his way into his ex's life. The last straw was this last time off work. He was away for two weeks, then came home for one day before flying off to the United States for a vacation with his new girlfriend. So, I called my daughter-in-law, checked that she wanted the pup back. She almost cried with joy, packed up everything that belonged to the dog and took him over there. My grandchildren were ecstatic. My son just came home for three days before he has to leave for work and asked where his dog is. I told him the truth. He is calling me an a-hole for giving away his pet. Also, because I said if he tried to go get the dog and bring it back, he was not welcome in my home. Am I the a-hole? It wasn't his pet. He was never there and didn't care for the dog. It was a means of punishment for his ex. OP did the right thing. Pretty Royal 9021 says, Not the a-hole in my opinion. He's only thinking of himself, not you, not the dog, and not his kids. Also, calling you an a-hole? You're nice to let him back into your home at all after that. Cutie Little Hell Beast says, I'm not generally supportive of unilaterally giving away someone's pet, but I think it was entirely justified in this case. He brought it into your home without asking you, and he's literally never home to take care of it. He was intentionally making you, the dog, and his own children upset, just to get back at his wife for not putting up with his cheating. Good job, Grandma. Not the a-hole. Bitter Conflict 4089 says, Not the a-hole. Your son is an a-hole. Honestly, it does make sense for him to pay rent for a few days per month. Consequences for his horrible behavior are not a terrible thing. Jake, my spouse's emotionally spoiled golden child older brother. Sandra, Jake's mean girl wife. It all started when my now husband and I got engaged in September of 2019. We promptly began planning our wedding since we didn't want a long engagement and we knew what we wanted for our wedding. My husband's older brother, Jake, and his now wife, Sandra, had been engaged for five years at this time with no thoughts as to what they even wanted for a wedding and nothing planned. By November of 2019, we had a date, July of 2020, a venue, premarital counseling sessions started, save the dates made and sent out, etc. I was busy. Around that time, late autumn, the women of my husband's family have a tradition of getting together for a girls only autumn craft day. It's a very white, suburban, live, laugh, love ordeal. But since my family is more reserved and urban, I think it's fun in a kitschy sort of way and generally have an all right time. This is where I noticed Sandra giving me the evil eye and even leaving the room whenever my upcoming wedding was discussed by others. She sulked away to a desk in the corner, despite an empty chair at the table next to me. To drown us out, she started playing her music on Pandora, but whenever a song about marriage or weddings came up, she skipped it. 
I was asked so many questions about how my spouse proposed, the ring, my dress, the venue, and it seemed so harmless and pleasant at the time to talk about it all. I was excited, and everyone, except Sandra, was too. I didn't think too much of all this until Christmas of 2019, since Sandra has never been very warm to me regardless. Last Christmas, I received a tote bag with my to-be-married name, Mrs. Blank, printed on it. It made me so happy to see it. I felt like I was part of the family at that moment, until I looked up at Sandra. Sandra crossed her arms and legs, then scoffed loudly as she rolled her eyes at Jake. Jake then gave me the dirtiest look I've ever seen. It was malicious. When my spouse was busy chatting with members of his family, Jake came up to me to badmouth my spouse. His car isn't as nice as Jake's car. Jake's house is bigger than my spouse's house, etc. He doesn't talk to me long anyway, thankfully, since usually gets bored when I don't side with his catty comments. He even gets angry if I bring up how responsible my spouse is with money, after he gets done belittling how shabby our possessions are compared to his and Sandra's. This is usually because Jake and my spouse were raised by their narcissistic mother to compete for her affections constantly. Jake was always the emotionally spoiled golden child, who could do no wrong, and my spouse was the scapegoat. At age two, my spouse's mother told him the divorce she had just gotten from his dad was his fault. Growing up, Jake was encouraged to join in picking on my spouse as well. My spouse still has permanent hearing damage in one of his ears from Jake slapping him upside the head so much. Two days later, Jake called my spouse to say he and Sandra were now getting married. The wedding was to be just three months before our wedding, on my birthday, at a venue nearly identical to our venue, and the venue was at the town my spouse and I had gotten engaged. The best part, only my spouse was invited. I was specifically excluded. My spouse never once thought of abandoning me on my birthday for their tacky knockoff wedding. Jake yelled at us on the phone and said he couldn't believe how unsupportive we are and how we need to be happy for him and Sandra. To this day, we have not spoken. To this day, my spouse says he no longer has a brother. Their narcissistic mother called my spouse an a-hole for not being there for Jake and Sandra. He is very close to cutting ties with her now, too. The family hates me and my scapegoat spouse for sure now more than ever. I tried so hard to be pleasant and polite, so this confuses and hurts so much. Since virus hit the world not long after the knockoff jealousy wedding took place, my spouse and I didn't get the wedding we planned anyway. We had a simple courthouse wedding with just a couple very close people just before everything shut down. It still hurts so much to see my wedding ripped off and then denied to me. I will never forgive Jake, Sandra, or the narcissist mother-in-law, who everyone agrees most likely had a hand in helping to plan the cruel knockoff wedding. Recently, my husband's grandma has passed away, and he was very close to her. His grandma raised him since his narcissistic mother didn't want the scapegoat in her house, but would not allow my husband's dad to have custody either. I have to go to a memorial service for her in less than two weeks. Narcissistic mother-in-law, golden child Jake, and mean girl Sandra will be there along with all the family members who probably take their side. I want to be there for my husband since he deeply loved his grandma, and I plan on going to support him. He understands if I hang out on the sidelines and keep to myself the whole time. Still, even the thought of going and seeing such evil people again keeps me up all night with panic attacks. I just want to feel better, but nothing has ever hurt me like this before. Edit for update. Those saying some of my husband's family will see Jake and Sandra for what they are do give much needed perspective as well. I do remember a few of my husband's aunts asking why I wasn't invited to the wedding. Jake and Sandra backpedaled hard and told everyone I was invited. I wish I had recorded the conversation we had on the phone where they specifically said I couldn't come and they wouldn't make room for just one more person. They lied like a rug when confronted by family and said we didn't go because we were jealous of them. OP needs to remember that the best revenge is a life well lived. OP's bitterness will only hurt OP and no one else, and OP can find consolation in the fact that they are broken people who can never be truly happy. It's not easy, but OP can let all this go and live the life she deserves. Lemon Lime Aardvark says, Well, Jake and Sandra just suck. But of course, this comes as no surprise. Copying the wedding that you wanted to have because they're so vacuous and useless that they can't come up with anything original on their own. Cramming it in before yours, because of course they would, so that it would seem like you were copying them. Having it on your birthday and excluding you 
forcing your husband to declare loyalties, and also royally playing themselves, because now their anniversary is on the birthday of someone they obstinately hate. I mean, they really are pathetic, making this the look-at-me hill that they die on. But then that's what these sort of a-holes do. Don't let their BS beat you down. That's what they want. Tropics and Caffeine says, Do not give them this power over you. Next year, when, hopefully, all this is over, you and your husband do a vow renewal. Many people are doing that, in a place that is just you and him. Do not let the family know about it until it is done. Or, tell them about it, but tell them a different location. So let's say you plan a trip to renew your vows in Hawaii. Tell them a venue in Florida and see if they show up there. Never invite them, but let them think it is at a certain spot at a certain time. Silent Walk Away says, They're obviously jealous of you, so I say give them everything to be jealous of. Have a great marriage. Pretend you don't notice their BS at all. Act happy for them whenever they do this crap. Don't you see you've already won? It'll drive them nuts.